Back in Counter-Strike Source, my favorite sidearm was the FN57, which looks a little something like this. In CS Source, it had an all-black paint scheme, but this one has a very flashy and modern desert tan polymer grip. And this fires the somewhat unique 5.7 by 28 millimeter round, and that is where the handgun gets its name, the 5.7. And to illustrate the difference between the 5.7 by 28 millimeter round and other traditional handgun rounds, I have these two rifles in front of me. First up, the L85, firing the 5.56 by 45 millimeter round. Oh, almost had that. So this guy with this round, it is the same one fired by the AR-15. It is the 5.56 NATO round, which means it's standardized amongst the NATO countries. Moving on to the VZ-58. This is firing the 7.62 by 39 millimeter round. And this is the same round fired by... Oh, almost had that one. The AK-47. You might be wondering why I didn't just grab an AR and an AK-47, but I wanted to be kind of interesting, so I have two less popular firearms there. So these are the two rounds side by side, 5.56 NATO on the left, 7.62 by 39 millimeter on the right. And they're very similar, but they have slightly different philosophies. So the 5.56 NATO round has a much lighter bullet, fires much quicker and has a flatter trajectory. Whereas the AK round has a bit of a heavier and stubbier bullet and packs a little bit more of a punch, but doesn't quite have the flight characteristics for long range accuracy. So I'm just gonna toss those rounds and their respective guns. So moving on to this Glock 17. It's a very popular handgun and has a very popular round, the 9x19 round. Okay, I'm gonna get one of these. <laughs> Got it. So here is a 9x19 round and let's put some through the 5.7. Ooh, not so lucky on that one. So this 9x19 round, uh, just briefly talking about those dimensions and how we get 9x19. So the 9 is the projectile diameter. So that would be the diameter of the projectile, the diameter of the barrel. And 19 is the length of the casing. So this is very standard for a handgun round. It's a straight casing, whereas this 5.7x28mm round looks exactly like a rifle cartridge, a very small one. And that's really what it was de designed to do, have a very high-speed bullet and uh, especially better at penetrating armor. There are a lot of other factors that come into play. You can't just go out and have something like this in full metal jacket and expect to defeat armor, but I'm going to save that discussion for another video because there's a lot that goes behind that. But really this thing just has uh, better recoil characteristics and a much flatter trajectory for long range firing. So just uh, quick stats to bore you with. Uh, while these are significantly different, um, the amount of a punch they pack, so to speak, is similar. So this 9x19 round is going to be hitting with about 600 joules of force, whereas the 5.7 round is closer to 500, but the velocities are markedly different. So 9x19 round close to 1,200 feet per second, whereas the uh, 5.7 round is closer to 2,200 feet per second, and uh, something like a 5.56 NATO round is 3,000 feet per second. So, I mean, that extra velocity is just unbelievable. So on this guy, even though the force that it is imparting on the, let's call it <laughs> recipient, is similar to the 9x19 round, this thing recoils so much less. I don't know how that works, to be honest. Uh, when I was firing this, it felt exactly like a 22 caliber handgun. Whereas, you know, a 9mm, very popular. You probably fired one if you do fire handguns, but I would say it's closer to like 60% to 70% of a 45 uh, caliber handgun. And I, I don't know how that works. It, this thing recoils, I, they would say about 30% less than nine millimeter, but I don't know. Maybe it's the bore axis or the way that the weight is distributed on this thing. But when I fired it, it just felt like nothing. I just felt like I could squeeze that trigger and keep that nose on target all day long. Which is interesting because this thing is uh, rather light. It has a full polymer uh, grip with a mostly polymer slide. There is some steel reinforcement where it matters, and obviously the barrel is steel. Uh, whereas on something like this, the uh, grip is polymer, but this entire slide is steel. 
So it's somewhat top heavy and a little bit of that weight helps goes into helps go into uh, stopping the nose from climbing and felt recoil. So I don't know how that works. Another advantage that you have of this round is it packs a lot tighter. You can see it is longer. These magazines are pretty close in length, but this is a 17 round capacity magazine. That's pretty standard and the high end for a nine by 19 round full size handgun. Whereas this thing holds 20 rounds, which is some amount of percentage more. You do the math. <laughs> So that, those dimensions and the weight of the entire um, cartridge helps a soldier carry more, but this thing is more complicated and less popular. So the 5.7 by 20 millimeter round, significantly more expensive. So before I get out of here, I just have a little laser to throw on here. And this one is different in that it is a green laser. Now, green lasers are less popular primarily because they're more expensive to manufacture than red lasers. And I don't know why exactly. I imagine that comes down to the elements that go into having to be excited uh, in a physical standpoint, physics standpoint to, to get that wavelength. But green is actually better for acquiring during the day than red. Red is fine at night if you need to. Red actually helps preserve night vision, but in dark scenarios, the color is not gonna matter so much as the intensity. In you know, bright sunlight, uh, that wavelength, this green wavelength is actually gonna be significantly more helpful and, and easier to acquire quickly. So I actually used to hate lasers. I thought they were stupid and they were just for people who couldn't aim correctly, but you know, using more handguns and fixing them onto um, them from time to time, I found that they're really just an extra tool and they make you better. I mean, if you're not a good shot, they're not gonna make you a great shot, but they can definitely make someone who's a good shot a better shot. So how I like to think of how a laser is useful is primarily in drawing your handgun and acquiring the target quickly. So without the laser, if you're pulling that up, a, a pretty standard draw involves rotating it, bringing it up to your sight line, and then out for a, a regular grip and stance. And the idea behind that is you can kind of rotate it to get a quick shot off at the hip if you need to, um, which is not recommended because you want to make sure you know where your bullets are going. But it's an option if you have a, a target right in front of you that is going to do imminent harm to you. Uh, so on this, hip fire is just wild. Now acquiring those sights while you're up here is still difficult. Sorry, I was looking through the wrong eye, my right eye, not your vision eye. So. Pulling it up here, you should have an, a good idea of where that handgun's pointing and get here quickly, but you're not gonna be 100% on target, so you're still going to need to visually acquire those sights. That takes time. If you're you know, nervous or shaking or it's at night when you don't have glowing night sights, that might be a problem, whereas with the laser, you, know, you wanna have one that's activated somehow by when you grip it or uh, motion or pulling it out of a holster. So when you bring that up, you can have that laser ready to go immediately. You know, you know where that barrel's pointing uh, vaguely, depending on how well you calibrated that laser, but just pulling it off the hip, you have an idea of where it is. And then going to the eyes, when you just point, so I'm gonna close my eyes and point this. Now, keep in mind my um, VR controller isn't really uh, something I'm used to, but so closing my eyes, oh, I guess I'll go like this. So I think I'm pretty close. Yep, pretty close there. Now you can see I'm pointing, my laser is just right of the target. That's pretty solid. But still, going from here to here without a laser versus whoop is, is so much more difficult. So that laser, you know, pretty pretty sweet. I, uh, I no longer knock them, and sometimes I rock them. Pretty sick PTP shots. Under the leg. Oh, it's empty. <laughs> Here we go. One last round. Let's just throw it in the chamber. Come on, get in there. Hmm. I guess that doesn't work. Well, I have you here. I just want to mention the magazine disconnect on this guy. So what a magazine disconnect is, is that it stops a handgun from firing if it doesn't have a magazine. So you saw me put a full magazine in there and charge the round. So if I drop the magazine, 
It's still on fire. I pull the trigger, nothing's gonna happen. Even if I put in an empty magazine, it's gonna go off. So there's a mechanism in there that knows when a magazine is there is in there. It's not electronic, it's just a, like a lever that's going to disconnect the trigger from the striker and that whole lever spring mechanism. I think the idea behind that is safety. So if you drop it and have a mag fall out or if you're getting ready to clean it and you go to just drop the hammer so that you can pull the slide off, you don't accidentally leave around there and fire. You maybe you'll investigate and be like, oh, I almost just blew a hole in my wall. I don't like it so much. I'd rather have something like a Glock. Uh, this doesn't even have a safety, but we can go into why it would be good without a safety. But this thing, if you put a round in it and then drop the mag, still going to get that last one off. Uh, the slide's not going to lock back because you don't have an empty mag to uh, assist in, in that function. But I still like the ability to do something like that. It gives you the option of being in battle. Maybe you lose your magazine somehow. You can pull up the slide, drop around in the chamber, close it, fire, and um, it's just an option. You know, I like having the more expert technique, like a manual transmission in a car, where it gives you more control, more feel, more connection to the vehicle. But at the same time, you can destroy it if you don't know how to do it correctly. Um, that's just personal preference. You might like a magazine disconnect. You might not. That's up to you. So thank you guys so much for watching. That is the FN57. Very cool. Somewhat of a an oddball in the handgun world. And it is rather expensive as a result. But then again, so is everything else that FN makes. So again, thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Let's see if I can pull off a pretty sweet trick shot here. Oh, would have been sweet. <laughs>